Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. I've been running a series talking about popular, powerful endgame unique items, uh, and they've been running the spectrum from very accessible items like Atsuri's Promise, uh, through to items that are pretty hard to farm yourself, but very easy to pick up in a trade league like Chevron's Wrappings or Eternity Shroud. And then at the other end of the spectrum, there are the super expensive items that are very hard to trade for, very hard to source by yourself. And today we're going to really go at that end of the spectrum with Headhunter. Arguably the single best item in Path of Exile, uh, and one of the most defining in terms of the way that it changes your playstyle, and the way that you can fit it into pretty much any build, but there are entire builds that are designed to optimise Headhunter as much as possible. Uh, this is just an item that is a relic from a past era of the game when GGG just were not as good at game balance. And it's managed to dodge the nerf bat for literally more than five years. So it seems like it's pretty safe at the moment. The first thing I'll note is that my headhunter here, which I picked up in trade for about 76 exalted orbs in the Ritual League, uh, although the item has dropped a little bit in price, so I think it's now like 71 uh, at the time I'm recording this, this has attribute modifiers quality on it. Uh, so we'll just quickly discuss the mods on the item, uh, what they do, and why it is that one of them is so important. So, firstly, uh, 25 to 40 life from the implicit, 50 to 60 life from the explicit mod. Uh, this is really strong. You want life on most characters, unless you're an energy shield based character. You want as much life as you can get. And Headhunter has a, uh, has a pretty solid amount of it. Next up you've got the stat mods. 40 to 55 to strength, 40 to 55 to dexterity. Uh, the uh, stats in Path of Exile are not all that powerful, but you do have to get them somewhere. You've got to meet your gem stat requirements via some means, and you may as well get the effect, uh, uh, get them from Headhunter, because you would wear Headhunter if it didn't have any of the life, and if it didn't have any of the stats. It's that good. And so these are just gravy. But they're pretty strong. Uh, next up we have the mod 20 to 30% increased damage with hits against rare monsters. On most characters, this is the second best mod on a headhunter, uh, although it's uh, and it's the one that you would want to roll your divine orbs to work on. So generally speaking, if your headhunter has 29, oh, sorry, has 28 or less in this stat, you probably want to apply a divine orb to it, even if the strength, dexterity, and life rolls are pretty good. This is counterintuitive what it does. Most people see this and think, oh, 25% increased damage or 30% increased damage if you had a divine perfect one, uh, and don't think that's very good. However, it works differently to that. The reason that it's different is that it modifies the damage the enemy takes, which is a stat that is very hard for you to get via other means. You can get it by inflicting a shock on an enemy, uh, and you can get it through a couple of other sources. Uh, there's a unique belt that does it, um, and a few other uh, a few other ways that you can get this stat of increased damage taken by enemies. But Headhunter gives a lot of it, and gives it on a belt, and gives it when you need it most uh, against rare monsters. So this is really good. The way that I like to think of this is that if you are playing a build that can take advantage of it, which is a build that mostly deals damage with hits, uh, so that means a build that is not inflicting damage over time, so not Toxic Rain, uh, not Ignite builds, not Poison builds, not Bleed builds, but if you're dealing damage with the initial, uh, initial strike against an enemy, then all rare monsters that you hit are considered, they take damage from that hit as though they already had a pretty big shock on them. Uh, potentially a 30% shock if you have a perfect roll on that spot, uh, on that mod on your headhunter. Uh, but even if you don't, even if it's 25% like mine, uh, that's pretty chunky. A 25% shock on the enemy and it stacks with shocks as well. So if then, if your first hit inflicts a 30% shock as well, then suddenly the enemy is taking 55% increased damage for the next hit. So that mod is a lot better than it looks, but the reason you're wearing Headhunter is the last mod. When you kill a rare monster, you gain its modifiers for 20 seconds. Now let me be clear, this mod is so powerful that if Headhunter had no other effects, uh, it would still be a chase unique item. What does this do in practice? Uh, monsters get very powerful mods in this game. Uh, where a player gets a few percent move speed from, from the player version of the haste skill and a few percent of action speed, monsters get something like 50% action speed from the monster haste aura. 
Uh, the reason that monsters get, so, uh, get skills that are so much more powerful than what players get is because monsters don't live as long as players do, so for, them to, for their mods to be impactful, they have to be scaled really high. However, with Headhunter, you seize that mod and you get it for a full 20 seconds. The monster might have only had it for one second, only benefited from it for one second, then you get to benefit from it for, for, uh, from it for 20 seconds, uh, which is huge. You can scale that 20 seconds via a couple of means, and I'll just mention them for completeness now. Uh, the first one is from the Shaper's Unique Amulet. Uh, that causes buffs and debuffs on, oh, that causes buffs on you to expire slower, uh, which is an extremely strong effect. If you can give up your amulet slot, uh, this will cause you to average about 25% uh, more uh, mods that are affecting your character, which is really, really powerful. The other way that you can scale it is via a complex system of shenanigans that players call uh, that players call self-cursed temporal chains. What you do here is you equip the unique gloves Shackles of the Wretched. These have generally pretty bad stats, but they have a unique mod you can't get anywhere else, which is curses in this item are reflected to you. So that means that whenever you inflict temporal chains on an enemy, uh, you also suffer your own temporal chains, which can be scaled up pretty high. Now that sounds really bad, but the thing that's important with Temporal Chains is that whilst it slows action speed, uh, it also causes buffs and debuffs on you to expire slower. And that includes Headhunter buffs. So this, uh, the overall shenanigans work that you curse yourself with Temporal Chains, uh, and then once you've done that, you then get to, uh, your Headhunter buffs last much, much, much longer. You then bypass most of the negative effects of Temporal Chains by having the Unique Boots Calms Roots equipped. So this takes up a lot of inventory slots. S suddenly you're starting to dedicate your belt to Headhunter, your gloves to Shackles of the Wretched, and your boots to, Cal uh, to Calms Roots. Uh, but overall, it's probably the single most powerful way that you can use Headhunter. And it remains that way despite the fact that it was nerfed a few leagues ago. So that's everything that's really to be said about what Headhunter does. Uh, why it's so good is that there's a number of ways that you can increase the quantity of rare monsters on a map. Uh, and these tend to be things that players like doing at Endgame anyway. So you can run your maps with uh, lots of mods on them. If you're running an 8 mod map, then it's going to have a 40% increase in pack size or so. 40% increase in pack size means 40% increased rare monsters. So this means that if it's going to take you 20 seconds to get from point A to point B, you might kill uh, five, uh, five rare monsters normally, but now you're going to encounter seven of them that you can kill, and that's going to mean you're going to walk around with seven headhunter buffs. But having seven headhunter buffs instead of five makes your character faster. And as a result, you're, you're then able to get this cascading effect where the more buffs that you get from Headhunter, the more quickly you're able to replenish those buffs uh, and the more of them that you're able to have on average on your character. Some of the sorts of buffs that you can look out for uh, will be massive increases to your character's life pool and especially energy shield. Uh, and I want to quickly demonstrate that. I've got one of the lower tier Chayola uh, Breach Stones that dropped for me recently. And I'm just going to throw that into the map device and run it now. I can't remember whether I put the uh, Maven on this. Anyways, uh, I won't bother doing the actual Chayula fight on the video. I don't think it adds much. Now, at this point, we're going to come into this zone. Uh, because Path of Exile has been running so poorly for me this league, I'm just going to wait a little while before I start it. Uh, and now, we're going to get it going. This is a monster level 81 zone, so tier 14 map equivalent. And once we start killing rare monsters, which we haven't had a single one of spawn yet, uh, we will start getting headhunter buffs. And then at that point, you'll see how the, uh, the effect that it has on your character, which is just electric. So this is the icon for a headhunter buff. Uh, and we'll start getting more of them as we zoom through. You don't have much control over which ones you get. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll get haste, sometimes you'll get um, other, other effects. Uh, the most powerful ones, though, are the auras. And you can see at the moment that I have an aura, which I believe is increased physical damage. Even though my character is not specialized around dealing physical damage, uh, that is a tremendous boost to the amount of uh, damage that I can output in this zone. And so zoom, zoom through here. 
Uh, now I've picked up the, um, I think the ability that causes me to, to yeet fireballs randomly at monsters from a Nemesis mod. And I've, I'm moving faster because I've picked up some quick effects from monsters. And now I've got the haste aura, I think, which is just uh, crazy. Uh, my maximum life and energy shield are going up at times. Currently I've got one buff that's giving me 10% of life as maximum energy shield. Now I've got two of them. Uh, and if you run a map that's particularly cra that's particularly optimized for beyond uh, monster spawning, uh, you can get 12 of those running at a time or more. Uh, now I've got more and more more and more energy shield appearing on my character, and we're just zooming through here. Okay, so that gives a bit of a sense as to what gameplay looks like. Uh, this aura here that we've got, allies deal extra physical damage, uh, is incredibly powerful and far more powerful than any uh, any comparable effect that's available to players. So. That is what gameplay looks like with a headhunter. Now, how do you optimize maps to get more out of it? So the first one is just by forcing more monsters onto the map. The second one is by forcing more rare monsters specifically uh, by, the, uh, by rolling the map modifier Nemesis onto your maps. Uh, this will cause the map to have 20 to 30% more mo uh, rare monsters on it. And 20 to 30% more rare monsters means 20 to 30% uh, more headhunter buffs. Uh, but it also means that every monster will have a nemesis mod and those will have a chance to be the really powerful ones like soul eater but the single biggest factor that increases the number of rare monsters on a map is having the beyond effect on the map uh, beyond is something that you can add from zana's map device uh, through the through the option here where you can spend five chaos or with harvest you sometimes get these for free and this will cause your, uh, when you kill enemies in a cluster near each other, uh, you will often spawn a beyond pack. A beyond pack contains one rare monster and three magic monsters. Uh, this rare monster will give you additional beyond mods. Uh, this then stacks in addition with the map mod beyond as well. So lots of things that you can do there. All of these scale and stack with each other uh, and cause the map to give you more and more rare monsters, which then causes you to get more and more headhunter buffs. So all that out of the way, how do you actually go about getting one of these items? So the first way is simply through extreme luck. I'm gonna say this for completeness, uh, but I do think that a small percentage of the headhunters that exist in a trade league come from people just getting lucky drops. But the ways that you can get a lucky drop, uh, you'll notice here that with Awakening Level 8, and you can get Awakening Level 9 now, you have a, an 8% chance for an additional unique item to drop from a unique map boss. Unique items that drop this way have a slim chance of being a past League exclusive unique. So Headhunter was something that was originally intended to be a Nemesis League exclusive item back when Path of Exile did League exclusive items like that. Uh, then they started adding ways to get these in, in future Leagues. And one, uh, one of the ways is that that 8% chance to get a unique item when you kill a map boss uh, can just roll an upgrade to a League exclusive unique. Very rare that, that will happen, uh, but when it does, there's a chance you'll get a headhunter from it. This is not a major source of headhunters. The other random sources along those lines are Legion, Blight, Delirium, and Heist encounters uh, that grant unique item rewards. All have a slim chance to give you a, a League exclusive unique. When you do get a League exclusive unique, it's much more likely to be something common like Barracks Grip or Talisau's Sign, but it can be a headhunter. Additionally, uh, Legion Incubators and Delve Fossil, uh, Delve uh, Hidden Heirloom nodes can also randomly drop one. But the main sources of Headhunters come from two mechanics. The first one is from Zana's Nemesis League flag. This is a complex concept uh, because it's very easy to get this wrong. There are two effects on Zana's crafting bench, one of which appears now to always be available and one of which is uh, only available in some leagues and it's not available at the time that I'm recording this video. Uh, you'll see here that I have a Harvest Infused Nemesis craft. Infused Nemesis does two things to the, to the map that you run. Firstly, it adds extra monsters. Rare monsters each have a Nemesis mod, area contains 10 additional packs with a rare monster each. But 
The other thing that it does is hidden, and that is that it tricks the game into thinking that it is back in the days of the Nemesis League. The other option is if you have uh, Nemesis as a Zana crafting mod option, uh, that will also trick the game into thinking that we're back in time. We're back to, I think it was 2014, when the Nemesis League came out. So, when you have that League flag active, uh, any monster that you kill has a very slim chance of dropping a Headhunter. But additionally, there's a number of um, ways that you can create unique items in maps uh, using Ancient Orbs and Orbs of Chance. And if you're in a zone with the Zana Nemesis League flag, then Ancient Orb applied to a belt has a slim chance, some people estimate it as about 1 in 350, of creating a Headhunter. Orb of Chance has a much slimmer chance, uh, some people estimate it as about 1 in 25,000, of creating a Headhunter out of the belt that you've used. These are very, very common ways by which Headhunters are created in, in trade leagues. Uh, so people will aggressively trade for Ancient Orbs, then use their small number of Zana infused Nemesis of uh, Harvest infused Nemesis crafts to add the Nemesis League flag to a zone, uh, and then to run those maps and hopefully get themselves a lucky uh, outcome and get themselves a Headhunter. One very important thing. There is a map mod that looks superficially very similar to Zana's Nemesis and Infused Nemesis mods. Uh, and that is a mod that I'll just have a look and see if I can roll one of quickly. Okay, and I found a map that has this mod on it. So you'll notice that this Arid Solitude strand map here, the first mod on it is Antagonist. 23% uh, more rare monsters. Rare monsters each have a Nemesis mod. You might think that because this is superficially very similar to the Infused Nemesis mod, that this will actually apply the Nemesis League flag. Uh, it does not. So the, in, the source of the Nemesis mod needs to be the map device, not the map itself. Uh, very important to get that right because you can lose a lot of currency trying to roll a Headhunter in a map that had no chance anyway. So that's the first source of most of the headhunters that will exist in a trade league. Some of them will appear as random drops. Uh, some of them will appear as ancient orb, uh, ancient orb results, and some of them will appear as chance orb results. In the current league, the ritual league, there's a lot of ancient orbs going around, and so it's ancient orbs that are the main source of them uh, from the map device. But that's not always the case. Additionally, uh, you can scale up the just straight out dropping of headhunters. And the way that people do that is by getting the juiciest maps they possibly can uh, and applying a winged reliquary scarab to get three and a half times as many uh, unique items to drop in there and just roll a dice over and over again hoping to get a headhunter. Uh, if you're going to do this, you are going to want to be running 100% delirious maps uh, with crazy mods, crazy, crazy, crazy mods, uh, and also running them in areas with uh, really powerful... Uh, fully developed atlas passives uh, so that you can maximize your chances of getting well of killing as many monsters as possible in them uh, so that you can get yourself as much loot as possible and just hope that one of those items is actually a headhunter you'll lose uh, if you do this you will lose currency on the maps that don't drop a headhunter so with all of that out of the way let's talk about the second mechanic that drops most of them and that is divination cards so there are something like seven divination cards that have a headhunter as either a uh, as a significant enough chance of a reward that players go out of their way to farm them. There are five divination cards that directly grant a headhunter, and there are two that more probabilistically do so that I think are worth discussing as well. So firstly, we have the patient. The patient drops in the armory map. A set of eight turns in for a divination card called the nurse. Uh, the nurse drops in the tower map, and a set of eight of them turns in for a divination card called the Doctor. The Doctor is an extremely rare drop in Burial Chambers and also in Spider Forest, and a set of eight Doctors, which I don't have one to showcase here, uh, will turn in for a Headhunter directly. So those three divination cards uh, drop in a diverse set of map tile sets, uh, and you can try and farm them, but fair warning, expect to run literally thousands of maps. Uh, before you get yourself a headhunter this way. I did a bit of an experiment uh, where I streamed running 30 uh, armory maps using divination scarabs and I only got 12 patients from them. 
And that's pretty much in line with what I'd expect if I was running tower maps. Uh, I'd get one or two nurses and doing the same sort of test. And I'd probably expect to get zero doctors if I was running burial chambers, but I'd have some, I'd have a chance of getting one, but I just wouldn't be likely to. Then there are the rarer divination cards. The Fiend is a set of 11 that gives a headhunter with one Vile Implicit. Uh, this drops from the Shrine map and it is considerably rarer than the Doctor. No one really goes out of their way to target farm Shrine map because the Fiend's drop rate, uh, well, actually a Corrupted Headhunter is weaker than a normal Headhunter now in the age of uh, Catalyst. Uh, and additionally, you can get, um, you just won't get as many Fiend cards as you get Doctors and you need more of them. So I'm mentioning it for completeness, but don't bother with trying it. And then the other one is the divination card, the Demon, which drops from map boss Katava in Lava Lake. Uh, so Katava the Destroyer has a very, very, very slim chance of dropping the divination card, the Demon, and a set of 10 Demon cards turns in for a two implicit corrupted headhunter. Uh, a set of the Demon is quite a bit better than a set of the Doctor. Uh, so a two implicit corrupted headhunter is better than a normal one, but this divination card is so staggeringly rare that I have not personally ever found a video of this divination card dropping. Whereas all the other divination cards that can get you a headhunter, uh, you've, there's plenty of video footage of them dropping. Uh, it's just so rare that I've not seen a single, single, um, I've not seen a single video of it. So I'm mentioning it for completeness and a number of copies of the Demon card are available in trade leagues because they come out of stack decks and someone goes, oh, fantastic. I just got 11 exalts out of that because I just got a Demon card. Uh, but they don't think of it as being, I'm one tenth of the way to a headhunter. They think of it as being, oh, cool. Here's 10 exalts that I can, or 10 or 12 or whatever it is at the time, exalts that I can use towards my other, my other goals in the league. So the other divination card that the cards that need to be mentioned are the probabilistic ones. And there are two in particular. There's a divination card named the Valkyrie, which grants you a rare, uh, which, sorry, which grants you a unique Nemesis League exclusive item. And there is a divination card called the Wretched, which grants a unique belt. These have a chance of granting a headhunter. Uh, it's not a high chance, but it is a chance. And they have enough of a chance that there's a fair amount of demand for these. One of the most popular strategies for target farming a headhunter is to run tower maps uh, because the tower drops both the nurse divination card and also the wretched. And collect up nurses, trying to get yourself a set of 64, but along the way, turn in every set of the wretched you get. And you might just get really lucky and get a headhunter that way. The Wretched Divination card drops about 12 times as much as the Nurse in my experience, although it's been a long time since I've farmed them. Uh, and so you'll get two, for each Nurse that you drop, you'll get two shots at the Wretched Lottery as well. Uh, ultimately though, getting yourself a Headhunter through Divination cards, or whilst it's possible, it requires an extraordinary amount of grinding and it is not at all for the faint of heart. So, now that we've mentioned the Divination cards, what other sorts of ways are there to source yourself a headhunter? Uh, I mentioned some of the probabilistic ways earlier, and one that I forgot to mention was getting an Einhar Lucky Menagerie Craft. So I'm just going to jump to the Menagerie now. Uh, the last time I tried this, the game crashed, so let's see if that happens. Path of Exile has been running really poorly for me lately. Uh, ever since 3.13, and it, it gets three or four times worse while I'm recording or trying to stream. But we've managed to get here. Excellent. Uh, let's go and have a look and see what unique beast that we've got. Uh, there is a recipe here, and I don't have any of them. Uh, create a unique belt. This one's interesting because uh, the Farrak Ape is not all that rare of a, uh, of a rare beast. And you can basically get these as a free roll at a headhunter. Additionally, there's also Rizlatha's Coil, which whilst not as good as a Headhunter, is still a very, very lucky hit. I highly suggest that you come to your Blood Altar and use up all of the Amulet Beasts that you've got, Farrak Chieftains, and all of the Belt Beasts that you've got are the Farrak Apes, because the Amulets can get you a Badge of the Brotherhood with a bit of luck, and the Ape can get you a Headhunter or a Rizlatha's Coil, uh, and either of these are not so staggeringly rare that they never come up. Uh, you will find that you'll get these sometimes, uh, and when you do, you're going to have a very, very good day because those items 
If you're in a trade league, they're very valuable, and if you're in solo self-found, they're very, very, very powerful items that you can build a character around. So, uh, that covers basically all of the main ways that Headhunter is sourced. Uh, there's a lot of power in this item, and it is one of the biggest chase items the game has ever seen for a reason. Uh, it's also very expensive for a reason. If you do get one, I highly, highly recommend playing around with it. Additionally, if you just want to see what all the fuss is about, if you're someone that can't fund a headhunter during a trade league, what I suggest that you try and do, at the end of a trade league, uh, what you should do is trade, uh, go, go into standard and trade for a headhunter there. Headhunters in standard are a lot cheaper and you'll have all of the accumulated wealth of all the past leagues you've played in. Uh, and this means that you'll have one to play around with and you get a bit of a sense as to whether you think it's worthwhile uh, going absolutely uh, ballistic in playing you know, Path of Economy games uh, in order to raise the currency necessary to trade for one in a future league. I'll leave it there. Uh, fire away with your comments and questions. Otherwise, hope you have a good one.